Hello everyone and welcome back to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin, and today we're finally going to get ourselves back to Lord of the Rings. Starting Quest 2, this will be the fourth quest in the Saga series, A Knife in the Dark. Having narrowly escaped from the Nazgul in the Shire, Frodo and his hobbit companions arrive at the town of Bree and find lodging at the Prancing Pony. The innkeeper is a friendly man, but the enemy is already at work in the little crossroads town. Black riders have been seen looking about, and some of the locals are in their service. The hobbits don't know who to trust when a mysterious ranger named Strider offers to lead them to Rivendell. Strider is in fact Gandalf's friend Aragorn, and he leads Frodo out of Bree and into the wild to throw off pursuit. But the servants of the enemy are waiting for them at the tall hill called Weathertop. Black horsemen have passed through Bree. On Monday, one came down the Greenway, they say, and another appeared later, coming up the Greenway from the south. Frodo and his companions arrive at Bree to find the shadow of the Black Riders already on the crossroads town. Unsure of who to trust, they decide to lodge at the Prancing Pony. There they meet a friend of Gandalf named Strider, who offers to lead them to Rivendell, but their movements are also tracked by less savory folk. In dark and loneliness, they are the strongest. They will not openly attack a house where there are lights and many people. Not until they are desperate. Not while all the long leads of Eriador still lie before us. But their power is in terror, and already some in Bree are at their clutch. They will drive these wretches to some evil work. Fernie and some of the strangers, and maybe the gatekeeper too. Our setup rules for this quest, we start with Trouble in Bree is set all copies of the Ringwraith, the Witch King, Midgewater, and Weathertop aside out of play. Then add the Prancing Pony and Bill Fernie to the staging area and shuffle the encounter deck. Fortunately, you guys, I have Sam with me, so hopefully we can peg him with an apple or two. We cannot advance to quest card two until we get eight progress here, and the Prancing Pony is no longer in play. We have the Prancing Pony and Bill Fernie in the staging area. The Prancing Pony has, after the players travel here, the first player puts one ally into play from their hand. Oh, <laughs> that's a nice ability. After the Prancing Pony leaves play, you have to discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until X enemies, X is the number of players, are discarded. Then put each of those enemies that have been discarded into play engaged with the first player. Yeah, that's going to be gross. <laughs> What's also gross is Bill Fernie. Ah, oh, Bill Fernie, what an obnoxious guy. So we cannot optionally engage Bill Fernie. So annoying. Forced, at the beginning of the staging step, either shuffle one out of play ring wraith into the encounter deck, or each player raises their threat by one for each non, uh, I would call it ring hero, that is committed to the quest. So basically, Frodo can be committed to the quest, but any other heroes, we're going to either have to increase threat or shuffle one of the ring wraith cards into the deck. And they are these cards. 35 engagement attack for 5 with 5 health and 4 shield. Oh, yeah, I don't like them. Don't forget, last quest, we earned the Ho Tom Bombadil card. So this card, the first player adds this card to their hand. I will give that to, I think the first player this round is going to be the Hobbit deck. Yeah, let's do the Hobbit deck. So the Hobbit deck will have this card in hand. What you can do as a response is add this card to the victory display and remove it from the campaign pool. That means we get to use it one time and it's gone. But then we can cancel a when revealed effect of an encounter card just revealed from the encounter deck. And we get a victory point. But then this card, this card is toast. So it's kind of a one-time use, save you, and then you're done. <laughs> Our Hobbit deck's three heroes, we have Merry, Sam, and Pippin, will start at a measly 20 threat. It's going to be a long time until we can actually engage Bill Fernie at 38. <laughs> also, since we are first player, we're going to go ahead and grab Frodo Baggins. We are also going to put the Mr. Underhill card on him. So that way, whoever is first player potentially could negate an attack. Don't forget, we still have Gandalf's delay out in the staging area as well. Thanks to Barlaman, this is where we find out that Barlaman Butterbur totally forgot to give us a message from, Fro uh, from Gandalf to Frodo to tell him to get out of town. So this is why we're only drawing five cards instead of six. We'll start with Ho Tom Bombadil in our hand. We'll draw five more. So we've got Rosie, Song of Travel, Light of Valinor. Oh, I'm liking this. Ent Draft and Warden of Healing. One, two, three, four, five. 
Uh, I mean, it's okay. It's not wonderful. I do think... Yeah, I think I'm going to keep it. Our Rohan deck has Gildor and Glorian, Grimbjorn the Old, and Elfhelm. We'll start at 30 total threat, so we only have 8 steps of threat before we can actually engage Bill Fernie. We'll draw our 5 cards. We have Elrond's Council. We have Guthwine. That's nice. Bulwark of the West. We have Gandalf. And we have Armored Destrier. Yeah, we're going to reshuffle that. Our second time around, let's see. We have Steward of Gondor. <laughs> nice. We have Elrond's Council. We have Dunedain Mark. Ooh, plus one attack. That's nice. One, two, three. We have Bulwark of the West again. And we have Armored Destrier. That's not too shabby. We'll go ahead and start the game. We have generated our resources, and we'll each draw a card. And we have the Hobbit Pony and Errant Rider. During our planning phase, our Hobbit deck is going to go ahead and play the Hobbit Pony, the Song of Travel, and the Light of Valinor. Now, the Hobbit Pony is going to be placed on Mary. That means he'll have a mount, and he'll get plus one willpower. So his willpower will be three. The Song of Travel and the Light of Valinor will both go on to Gildor and Glorian, part of the Rohan deck. For the Rohan deck, let's go ahead and play Steward of Gundor using Gildor and Glorian and Elfhelm's resources. We'll then exhaust that immediately, and we now have three tactics resources. Moving to the questing phase, I know I'm going to quest with Frodo. We have a total of five threat in the staging area. We will be drawing two cards. So let's do Frodo. Merry, what's great is now since he has his Hobbit pony, we don't have to use him now, and so we don't have to worry about the threat increase. I definitely think we're going to send Sam Gamgee, and I'm not going to be putting Ring Wraiths in the deck, at least not yet. So we'll for sure increase our threat by one for that. And I, I think we got to do Pippin. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But we pushed our threat up all the way to 22. On this side, we'll send Gildor and Glorian for 3 and Elfhelm for 5. That means we'll increase our threat by 2 as well. So we're now at 32 threat and 22 threat. Don't forget, Light of Valinor allows, Gil allows Gildor to quest and he does not exhaust. Currently, it's 12 to 5. So we'll draw this first card. This is for the Hobbit deck. And we have the Shady Breelander. While the run one ring is exhausted, Shady Breelander gains cannot be optionally engaged. Okay. Gains uh, adds two more threat to the staging area. This is for our Rohan deck. Oh, we have a treachery card. When revealed, each ally gets minus one willpower until the end of the round. Deal two damage to each ally with zero willpower. Oh, we don't have any allies out. So that actually totally misses currently it's 12 to 7 we're doing pretty well i think i am going to exhaust mary and his hobbit pony to add three more questing so that's 15 to 7 that actually means we have gotten sufficient progress on trouble and brie <laughs> wow that's pretty cool but we don't get to pro progress until the prancing pony is no longer in play Moving to the travel phase, I think we're going to do it. We're going to go ahead and travel to the Prancing Pony. After you, the players travel here, the first player can put one ally into play from free in, from their hand. I think I'm going to put the Warden of Healing, just because then I've got him out to heal right away. It's not a bad thing to have. <laughs> Moving to the encounter phase, we're going to go ahead and optionally engage the Shady Breelander. We can do that because the One Ring is not exhausted. We're going to have the Hobbit deck optionally engage him because, thanks to Pippin, we can flip this over. Nice. We get the Master of, For of the Forge into our hand. Oh, that's actually really nice. Since we engaged the Shady Breelander, Sam will ready because our threat is lower than his engagement cost. Don't forget about Pippin. This might actually hurt us a little bit. Pippin is adding a total of four, right now, engagement cost to all of the enemies. That means right now Bill Fernie is at a 42. <laughs> Darn. We'll go ahead and move to the combat phase. We'll grab a shadow card. We're going to defend with Grimbjorn. And let's see, what do we get? We have no shadow effect. Sweet. So he attacks for three. Grimbjorn has three defense. Doesn't even hit him. Then we'll spend one resource. Grimbjorn will attack for three. Negate the armor, because he only has one armor and do a total of three points of damage to that Shady Breelander. Whew. Okay, that's not bad. Then over here, Sam has two points of damage that he can do. 
because when he readies, he gets plus one, plus one, plus one. If he readies when you have uh, an enemy that engages you that has a higher engagement cost. He'll attack for two. One will hit the armor. One will actually take out the Shady Brelander. That's awesome. So Grimbjorn weakens him, and Sam does the final blow. Looking around, we actually did not have anyone take damage. <laughs> awesome. So what we can do now is go ahead and refresh. After refreshing, we will each draw a card, and we have Secret Vigil and another Master of the Forge. <laughs> Sweet. Hold up, you guys. Totally forgot I needed to increase threat at the end of the round there. So we're at 33 and 23. Jeez, Colin. <laughs> Come on, get with the program. For the Rohan deck, we're just going to play one card, and that is the Armored Destrier. We're going to place that on Grimbjorn. That will increase his attack by one. He'll now be a four attack, three defense beast. <laughs> on the Hobbit side, we'll go ahead and spend two resources from Pippin to put out the first Master of the Forge. And we're going to exhaust that right away. Let's see. We need some attachments. I'm looking for those Hobbit uh, ponies as much as possible. One, two, three, four, five. And we have, oh, we have Resourceful. Another light, another end draft. Let's grab the resourceful card. I think then all we're going to do is play Rosie Cotton. We'll spend two of Sam's resources to bring her on out. Moving ourselves to questing, I don't think we want to quest too much quite yet. So we're just going to quest with Gildor and Frodo. That will hit our threat by one thanks to Bill Fernie. We could instead shuffle one of those ring wraiths in. Uh-uh. Not going to do that till I have to. And you're going to see why that matters later on in this quest, assuming we get there. On the Hobbit side, I think we're just going to quest with Sam. So we'll increase our threat to 24. And we just added 3 plus the 5. So we're at 8. There's only 3 in the staging area. Our first card draw will be for the Rohan deck. And we have a peril. Oh, no. When revealed, you must either remove two heroes you control from the quest or shuffle an out-of-play ring wraith into the encounter deck. I really don't want ring wraiths in the encounter deck, so I'm going to reduce the amount of questing by five. We, that means we're only at three. Oh, I don't know if this is a good idea. <laughs> But I really don't want to add a ring wraith. So that was for the Hobbit deck. Or no, that was for the Rohan deck. Now we'll go to the Hobbit deck. And we have a, so a squint-eyed southerner. When revealed, you must either shuffle an out-of-play ring wraith. Can you tell that they really want us to put ring wraiths into the deck? <laughs> uh, or we can reveal an additional encounter card. I still think I'm going to do an additional encounter card. Okay, let's see. What is it? Okay, Oh, just the pathless country. We quested for a total of three. We have three, four, five, six, seven threat in the staging area. I could add Rosie, but that still means we're going to be increasing our threat by two. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to exhaust the pony and Mary to add three. So that's six to our seven and then exhaust Rosie to add two to Sam. That puts us at eight. Eight to seven, oh, just enough for us to place one progress on the Prancing Pony. So I'm actually okay that we did not progress through this location. I don't think I was quite ready to go to Quest Card 2A already. We'll have to skip the travel phase, but moving into the encounter phase, we'll go ahead and have the Hobbit deck optionally engage this Southerner so we can draw a card. And we have the Song of Kings. Oh, that's not bad at all, actually. The Southerner here is attacking for two. We should make sure to remember to ready Sam. And we'll exhaust Grimbjorn to defend. And we have no shadow effect. Are you serious? Both of the Nazgul we've had as shadow cards. That is lucky. <laughs> I, I like that. Grimbjorn will then use one of his resources. He attacks for four. He negates bow shields. This guy's toast. That'll end the round. We'll go ahead and increase threat to 35 for our Rohan deck and 25 for our Hobbit deck. We will now refresh and generate resources. We've generated resources. Let's go ahead and draw our cards. And we have Fast Hitch and Dunedain Mark. Oh, another Dunedain Mark. Fast Hitch is going to be awesome on Mary. We can finally start using his ability. The first thing I think we're going to do is exhaust Master of the Forge. One, two, three, four, five. Let's look at our top five. Hobbit Pony. Uh, not even a question. That's going to allow us to quest, and we don't have to worry about threat increase. 
Normally, I like to play resourceful when it's a little bit cheaper, <laughs> aka only one instead of four, but I still think it's going to be worth it this time. I've actually used all of Frodo's resources and all of our Hobbit resources. So we have four here to play resourceful. We're going to play that on Pippin so we can generate two green resources around. We have Fast Hitch. That's going to go on to Mary. We have the Song of Kings, but this is actually going to go on to Grimbjorn. It's really going to open up the deck of our Rohan deck. And then we have our Hobbit Pony. We're going to throw that onto Sam. That will give Sam plus one shield. That's why it's here, because he'll be a leadership hero with a mount. I should also mention that Grimbjorn will also have plus one shield, because he is a leadership hero with a mount. The first thing we're going to do with our Rohan deck is spend Gildor and Glorian's one resource to go ahead and draw another card. And we have a Dunedain warning. I have not gotten so many of the Dunedain cards. This is awesome. It's just going to buff up Grimbjorn. We'll go ahead and spend three of Grimbjorn's resources. We're going to put all of these out on him. We have the Dunedain warning. That'll give him plus one shield. The Dunedain mark and the Dunedain mark, that's plus two attack. He will now be a three, four, five, six attack with three, four, five shield. <laughs> six attack, five shield. Oh, wow. Sentinel, he can ready. Yeah, he is a beast. For our Hobbit deck, for questing this round, we're just going to send Frodo. That way, we don't have to worry about increasing our threat. We'll be able to send Mary and Sam late. That's an additional six questing if we need it. But then I can kind of decide, well, do I want to push or do I not want to? So that's just two for now. We'll add to that Gildor and Glorian. He'll add three, so that's a total of five. And we will increase their threat by one. We're not going to put in a ring wraith for that. So their threat is 36. But we have a total of five to three threat in the staging area. Let's go ahead and draw our first card, and we have Piercing Cry. This is a peril. This is for the Hobbit deck. When revealed, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a Nazgul enemy. Either add it to the staging area or put it into play engaged with the first player. Oh, that's gross. Do I want to can't? I can't cancel that. I use Frodo's resources. <laughs> well, there it is. We are going to have a Nazgul out. So here's our Nazgul card. I had to grab it from the discard pile. Can you believe that? <laughs> I was so happy I discarded both of them, and they're coming out anyways. We'll have this engaged with the Hobbit deck. This means that they can draw one card. We have Peace and Thought. That's a pretty good card. I played it wrong the last time. I don't know if I'm going to play it because it's a refresh action, so we'll have to see if we want to use that. That was our first card. Let's go ahead and have the Rohan deck draw one. And we have another Peril. When revealed, attached to a hero you control counts as a condition attachment with the text limit one per hero, reduce attached heroes, willpower, attack, and defense to zero. Oh, um, okay. Well, that's peril, so that's going to have to go on one of the three heroes that the Rohan deck has. I, I guess Elfhelm. Yeah. I don't know who else we would want that with. Definitely not Grimbjorn, and Gildor is questing, so we don't want to do that to him. Well, we quested for a total of five, and there's a total of five threat in the staging area. I could, and I think I'm going to, I'm going to exhaust Rosie Cotton, and she'll add two additional willpower to Frodo. So we get to place two additional progress on the Prancing Pony, but we're not going to move to the next uh, the next quest card because I know what's coming. <laughs> this is the one advantage of playing this one already. I, I don't want to move while the Hobbit deck is the first player. And you know what, you guys? I have already cheated. If we look at this card, it says, while the Rider of Mordor is engaged with a player, characters that player controls get minus one willpower. So I went from having two willpower for Frodo to one. So we went from five questing down to four. Okay, then I added Rosie. Rosie would move us up to five because her willpower is now one instead of two. So I will take that two progress off of the Prancing Pony and we'll be even at five and five. No one can still engage Bill Fernie. He's going to stay out there, annoying us to no end. <laughs> we'll go ahead and move to the combat phase. I will exhaust Grimbjorn to defend. His defense is a total of five, and this Nazgul is attacking for four. We still don't have a shadow card effect. That is amazing. So the four is totally blocked. We'll then spend one resource from Grimbjorn and watch this. He attacks for six and reduces two armor six and that means we only have one armor here he takes out a nazgul in one attack 
that is definitely a beast. We'll go ahead and end the round. So we'll move ourselves up to 26 thread for our Hobbit deck and 37 thread for our Rohan deck. Let's go ahead and generate resources. We'll then finish the resource phase by drawing the top card of each deck. Oh, we have Fast Hitch and we have Westfold Horse Breeder. Let's go ahead and start off by playing Westfold Horse Breeder. So we'll spend one resource from Gildor and Glorian. We'll grab our deck. We get to look at the top 10 cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 for a mount. And yes, we have one. Hmm. I think I'm going to do the Rohan War Horse this time because I'll put that on Grimbjorn, I think. We're going to go ahead and play the Rohan War Horse and Errant Rider using both of Grimbjorn's resources since they are leadership and tactics. Then what we're going to do is we're going to play Bulwark of the West. We're going to discard the Errant Rider. And uh, we, we're doing that so we can discard a condition attachment. So we're going to get rid of this stupid black breath on Elfhelm so that he can actually be useful. But that means although we brought out Errant Rider, we're going to have to discard him. <laughs> now, I'm trying to decide. I don't know if I want to do the Rohan. Yeah, I have to. I have to put the Rohan Warhorse on Grimbjorn. So I'll place that on him. For the Hobbit deck, let's exhaust Master of the Forge. One, two, three, four and five. Oh, we have a song of travel. Ooh, a fireside song. Oh, a hobbit pony. Oh my gosh, so many good options. <laughs> I think let's do hobbit pony because then they'll be able to quest late with all of their heroes and they have no problems. So yeah, let's do the hobbit pony. We're going to play the hobbit pony on Pippin. Unfortunately, he is lore. That's the only one that doesn't get a benefit. So he doesn't get any benefit for this, but it will mean we don't have to quest with him. So we're not going to have to worry about increasing our threat until after the end of the quest phase. We are going to play fast hitch and we'll throw that onto Sam. For questing this round, we'll go ahead and use Gildor and Glorian. We'll use Frodo. So that's three plus two is five and the Westfold horse breeder for six. We will have to increase our threat by one because I am not shuffling in a ring wraith. On the Hobbit side of things, we're actually not going to put anyone in yet. The only people we will want to put in are our heroes, and we'll do that after we quest. So we don't have to worry about increasing our threat. Let's go ahead and start drawing. So this is for the Rohan deck. We have the Chetwood. While Chetwood is in the staging area, spy enemies get plus one threat and plus one attack. Ugh. And then this is for the Hobbit deck. And we have the Weather Hills. After the players travel here, place one non-unique enemy in play face down under this location. While an enemy is under this location, it is out of play. After this location leaves play, return each enemy under it to the staging area face up. Oh, interesting. Okay. Right here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, plus 1 from the Chetwood since this is a spy. That is 11 total threat. We only quested for 6. We'll late add Mary, that'll add 3, 7, 8, 9, and then we'll add Sam late, 10, 11, 12. And finally, we'll add Pippin, that's 13, 14 total to 11. That lets us place 3 progress, which is just enough to move through the Prancing Pony. We'll go ahead and grab 3 here, that places a total of 4 progress, now it says, after the Prancing Pony leaves play, discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until X enemies have been discarded. X is the number of players in the game. Put each enemy discarded by this effect engaged with the Rohan deck. Here's our encounter deck. We get to discard cards. and Wow, there were no enemies for a while. Holy moly. Still no enemies. <laughs> Where are they? Hey, enemies. Here's one. My goodness, and here's the second one. Okay, so these two will be engaged with the Rohan deck. Before we can do anything else, though, we now have Trouble in Bree that is going to complete because we no longer have the Prancing Pony out, and we had enough progress on here to move to the next card, Into the Wild. His plan, as far as they could understand it without knowing the country, was to go towards Archit at first, but to bear right and pass it on the east, and then to steer as straight as he could over the wildlands to Weathertop Hill. In that way, they could, if all went well, cut off a great loop of the road, which further on bent southwards to avoid the Midgewater Marshes. But of course, they would have to pass through the marshes themselves, and Strider's description of them was not encouraging. When revealed, 
Add Midgewater to the staging area, and each player places one progress on the current quest. At the end of the round, either remove X progress from this current quest, or shuffle one out-of-play Ring Wraith into the encounter deck. X is the number of players in the game. So we've got to make sure we can quest enough, because I do not want to put Ring Wraith into the encounter deck, if I can help it. Here we have Midgewater. So while Midgewater is the active location, enemies cannot attack, take damage, or be engaged. After Midgewater becomes the active location, return each engaged enemy uh, that's in play to the staging area. Hmm. So when we're in the marshes, we can't get hurt by enemies, but they're going to pile up in the staging area. And you can just imagine what's going to happen in the next card, or the next quest card, what's going to happen with all those enemies. I did almost forget to say this, the players cannot advance while Midgewater is in play. So we have to first travel there and explore through it. I'm not quite ready to jump right to the next quest card, and I don't like this Chetwood. It's giving plus one attack and plus one threat. So let's go ahead and travel here during the travel phase. We'll now go ahead and move to the combat phase. We still cannot engage Bill Fernie. He's still sitting out there being annoying as heck. <laughs> so we'll place shadow cards on these two enemies. By the way, do you notice how I did not do the when revealed effect of this uh, uh, squint-eyed southerner? That's because we discarded them and then put them into play. They were not revealed from the encounter deck. Sometimes that can be a little confusing, and I believe I did that right. So what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and defend with Grimbjorn, of course. We will defend against the Squintine Southerner. He's attacking for two. He does have a shadow effect. Attacking him, and he gets plus one attack. Uh, plus two if the one ring is exhausted. It's not. So he attacks for three, but we have five defense. <laughs> not a problem. We'll then go ahead and use Armor Destrier so we can discard this shadow card. Oh, it did have an effect. Awesome. And we will ready Grimbjorn. We'll also spend his one resource so we can uh, do a, a total attack of 246. And we reduce two armor. Yeah, he's, he's gone. <laughs> then we have our south, uh, our shady Brelander. Not even a chance. He attacks for three. We'll spend one resource to be able to defend. And then go ahead and immediately attack. We reduce his armor to zero. Plus we have a six attack. Yeah, he's gone. Wow, right now Grimbjorn is awesome. <laughs> I just want you to see right now we're at a total of 38 threat. And that technically is what Bill Fernie's engagement cost is, but we have Pippin. <laughs> so Pippin's making his engagement cost actually 39, 40, 41. So I'm trying to get myself up to 41 and then hopefully find a way to reduce my threat if I can. So we'll end the round knock our threat up to 39 and to 27. Then let's go ahead and refresh and gain resources. We have generated resources and we'll go ahead and draw our two cards. Yes, Treebeard and Rittermark Knight. I did almost forget at the end of the round, we need to remove the two progress we placed on here. So they kind of give you that one round reprieve, but now we need to make sure we at least have two progress on this card at the end of each round or another Ring Wraith is coming in to the encounter deck. We'll start with our Hobbit deck this time. We'll go ahead and exhaust Master of the Forge. Here are five cards. Yeah, Fireside Song. Great. We're going to have a little fun with the Hobbit deck. What do you think? <laughs> We're going to go ahead and first play Treebeard. We are using one of Frodo's two resources to do that. We are also playing Fireside Song. That is going on to Mary. So Mary will get one additional willpower because of that. And then we have a Master of the Forge, which will immediately exhaust. I'll move these over. Here's our deck. One, two, three, four, five. We're looking for... A, yes, look at that. So we'll also play, because we'll get this, I'll shuffle this out. We'll also play Song of Hope onto Mary, so that will give Mary another willpower. The first thing we'll do with the Rohan deck, we'll go ahead and spend... Gildor's one resource. Come on, give me something good. Draw a card. Well, that's still not bad. That's not bad at all. We're then just going to play a Secret Vigil, but we're going to throw that onto Bill Fernie. It'll reduce his threat by one. And then once we get up to the appropriate amount of threat that we can op uh, not optionally, but actually engage him and we can kill him, then guess what? We can reduce our threat by three. <laughs> I like that. So I'm going to throw Secret Vigil onto Bill Fernie. It's almost like I'm hitting him with an apple, okay? <laughs> Not exactly, but it's close enough. Moving to questing, we'll go ahead and quest just with Frodo from our Hobbit deck. So that's a total of two. 
On the Rohan side, we're going to use Gildor for three, so that's a total of five. We are also going to have Elfhelm, that's six, seven, and Westfold Horsebreeder, that's eight. We definitely want to get enough uh, questing here, but I also wanted to increase my threat by two. <laughs> so we'll now be at 41. Next round, Bill Fernie's engagement cost will be 42. We'll be at 42. Then we can take him out. Right now, we have a total of 10 threat in the staging area, and we're only questing for eight, but we do have all three hobbits ready to go. So let's see. Our first one, we have a Shady Brelander. That's really not bad. I kind of like seeing the enemies. Oh, we're going to exhaust Mary. We can finally do his ability. We're going to exhaust Mary. He then can decrease their threat by two. Sweet. Okay, so that was the first card. That was the Hobbit Dex card. Then we have Surge. Attached to a Nazgul enemy in play if able. Well, there isn't one, so we'll just discard that. Let's draw the next one. Seriously, there's still no Nazgul out. Thank goodness. Our second one. Ren revealed. Each ally gets minus one willpower until the end of the round. Deal two damage to each ally with zero willpower. That's actually a pretty bad card. That's going to kill both my Masters of the Forge, the Warden of Healing, and it's going to kill our Western, uh, Western Horse Breeder. So I am going to exhaust the one ring. It's a little bit risky. Spend one resource, and we get to shuffle this back in. There's not a ton of other cards in here, but I still feel like that's probably a better idea. Hopefully. Let's see. What do we get instead? We get a Peril. When revealed, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a Nazgul enemy. Either add it to the staging area or put it engaged with the first player. Well, that would be engaged with the Hobbit deck. That's actually okay. So this Nazgul will go ahead and engage the Hobbit deck. The Hobbit deck only has 25 threat, so they get to draw a card thanks to Pippin. Oh, we have another Warden of Healing. We have in the staging area two threat thanks to the Secret Vigil. So 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 to the total of 8 that we quested for right now. But what we're going to do is we're going to use Fast Hitch to ready Mary. Then we'll exhaust Mary and the Hobbit Pony to add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we went from 8 to 13. Then we'll add in Sam for another 3. That's 16. And Pippin for 2 more. That's 18. Now I said 18, but we need to remember every player has minus 1 willpower when this guy is engaged with him. So I just, I have 1, 2, 3, 4 that went on this quest. So we have to reduce 18 minus four. That'd be a total of 14. So then I think I am gonna add Rosie, who her willpower will only be one. So that's 15, 15 to 12. Well, you guys, we tried as hard as we could, but 12 compared to 15 is only three. We're gonna have two to complete the Chetwood, but we only place one progress here. That means a Nazgul is gonna go into the encounter deck at the end of this round, because I cannot remove two progress. Oh, I was trying, but that's as good as I can do. During the travel phase, we're going to go ahead and move to the Weather Hills. We're going to be able to grab any enemy that's out that's a not a unique enemy. I wish we could do this to Bill Fernie, <laughs> but we can't. We're going to grab this Rider, because I do not like him reducing our willpower, especially of the Hobbit deck. That really hurt us, you guys. Uh, so we're going to place him underneath here. Now, when we do travel through this, he'll come back out, but then he'll be out in the staging area, and I can have him engage the Rohan deck, where reducing our willpower isn't nearly as detrimental. Unfortunately, there's only one other enemy that we can engage. <laughs> I wish there was more. We have the Shady Brelander. Now, right now, the ring is exhausted, so we cannot optionally engage, but the Rohan deck has 41 threat. Our Hobbit deck only has 25, so he will be engaged with the Rohan deck. Moving to that encounter phase, let's grab the top card here. We will use Grimbjorn to defend. He has a total of 5 defense. We do have a shadow effect. Discard a non-objective attachment that you control. That's easy. I am going to discard the Light of Valinor. It's really not doing anything, <laughs> so we'll discard that. He attacks for three, hits the armor of Grimbjorn. Grimbjorn will spend one resource and annihilate him. <laughs> he attacks for six, reduces armor. Cool. At the end of the round, you guys, we have to shuffle in this Ring Wraith. We only have three cards in <laughs> the encounter deck. So he's very likely to be coming out. So that's a bummer. Okay. Well, we tried as long as we could. We didn't let Bill Fernie do it to us, but we just did not get enough progress. They were able to track us down. 
We'll have each deck increase their threat by one. So the Hobbit deck is at 26, and the Rohan deck is finally at 42. We have already done resource generation. I'll draw a card from each deck, and we have a Test of Will and a Westfold Outrider. 